This is chapter five loops, programming exercise one. Count positive and negative numbers and compute the average of numbers. So for this exercise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a program that reads an unspecified number of integers. So we could enter no numbers or zero numbers or 100, 1,000, 2,000 numbers, right? It's unspecified. What we're gonna do is each time a number is entered, we're going to determine if that number is a negative or a positive, and we're going to add that uh, to our calculation. We're gonna take all the numbers, we're gonna find out the total, and we're also going to find out the average. And the only way for us to know when the program is going to end is when the user entered number zero. After it, the program ends, then we're going to display the average of all the numbers as a floating point number. Now to do this, what we're going to have to utilize are loops for this exercise. Now there are many types of loops to use, right? Or there are several types of loops to use, but we're gonna to have to pick one that best suits our needs, our criteria. And in this case, there are the for loop, while loop, and do while loop. Which loop you're going to use will be determined what best suit your case, your scenario, and what is more intuitive to you when trying to tackle or solve this problem. So let's go ahead and solve it and let's see what works best for us. Now, what we're going to do, of course, is to, for us, from the start, we're going to just to create a scanner. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be asking the user to enter the values from the console. So the console is going to constantly be reading the user's input until the user enters zero. All right, so uh, what I also going to need is several other uh, variables. And for now, uh, I'm going to use the byte data type even though the byte data type is pretty small, but I don't think I'll be using uh, that much or a really large size. So I'm just going to keep it small. But if I do need it, I'll change it later. Um, but for now, byte should work. So the first few things that I want to uh, hold or store is to count the negative numbers and the positive numbers that uh, is going to be inputted, right? So let's do that by creating variables called negative, uh, negative numbers and positive numbers. Okay. Um, and these variables are going to be used to store the uh, negative and positive. And I want to initialize them to start at zero, right? They're going to hold no numbers. So let's see. What should I use to, uh, for now, what kind of loops should I use? Um, so for a for loop, you kind of have a set, right? You kind of have a range that you could create equal maybe 100. And as long as i is less than 100, then keep asking the user to enter a value, right? And in this case, that value should be stored in another variable. Let's call that value. Now, the problem here is, what if I only want to enter 10 numbers? If I want to enter 10 numbers but uh, and stop there, well, that is going to be a little tricky, right? Because this for loop runs from 0 to less than 100. So what I could do is, inside this for loop, is to simply say, hey, if the value Right? If the value turns out to be a zero, then I'm going to just simply break out of this for loop. So leave this for loop, go to the end of the scope, and then continue from here, right? Uh, from the end, from the end of the for loop. But isn't that a waste of space, right? You have something this large and you're gonna break out of it well, that is troubling, right? You don't really want to run that and then have to break out of it. It's unnecessary. And another issue is, what if I want to actually run more than 100 times? 
whatever I want to run 200 times 300 times right um, well that will be the prerogative of the user so it's best not to use a for loop in this case and rely on an if statement inside a for loop to do a check instead a while loop will be much better so while loop says that if system.out.println enter the value right value equals input dot next byte a while loop will do the check in here and we could constantly just check if the value equals zero uh, sorry if the value does not equal zero then we'll continue storing we'll continue asking the user to enter a value all right otherwise if the value does equal zero then we instantly could display system that out that print line uh, system, oops, not system. Uh, let's see number of positive integers will be a positive number plus number of negative integers negative okay so let's do a quick run of that actually before I do that I have one more thing to do which is basically to copy that paste that here if uh, if it's a if value is less than zero negative number plus plus else what else could it be but positive right so positive number plus plus okay so a little bit of code right there let's run it let's visualize it before we continue so what I'm asking here is that uh, I'm asking the user to enter a value I didn't say uh, zero of course of co uh, but we as the programmer will know that it will stop at zero all right let me. Um, and of course, I have initialized two variables right here that will hold the negative numbers that's been inputted and the positive number that's been inputted. The value in this case will store whatever the value that the user input and there will be a check inside this while loop. So this while loop says, hey, I'm going to keep running, 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 running over and over and over and over until this value that you enter equals to zero but as long as it does not equal zero i'm going to keep running so that's what it means by a loop it'll go over and over again repeating itself non-stop until there's a certain trigger there's a certain keyword that it checks there's a certain boolean value that it checks that if it ever returns um false it'll break out of the loop so in this case before I enter the loop, I'm over here, right? I'm on line 20. I ask the user to enter the value. So in this case, let's not enter zero. Let's enter one, right? Value is one. So what happens is the second it enters one, it goes into this while loop, right? This value gets checked. Hey, is one, does it not equal zero? Yeah, that's true. One does not equal zero. Okay, let's go into a loop and let's perform some kind of logic inside the loops let's run through these statements and it says hey if value if one is less than zero uh, or if this value is a negative number then increment this variable right now right here which is called negative number incremented by one so uh, by default i set to zero and it has been increased to one but if it's not a negative number if value is not less than zero it therefore must ooh, must equal zero or greater, right? Yeah, so it must be uh, greater than zero, right? Because if it's zero, then it won't enter this loop. If it's less than zero, it's a negative. If it's greater than zero, it's a positive. Therefore, if it's greater than, it will jump to this else and it will increment this positive number by one. All right, after all of this is done, once again, it will ask us, hey, enter another number, enter another value. 
and then I'll try, I'll grab that value and store it into this variable called value. As you can see, it'll keep looping itself. Two, right? Three, it'll keep looping itself until, right? Until I enter zero. And if I don't, it'll keep going on and on and on. Um, until, of course, it reached that trigger where it knows that the return value is false. All right. So that goes back to the for loop. So what if I want to enter 100 values, 200 values, 300 values? That for loop will keep running. Um, could run more than needed or less than needed. And then you will have to use a check within that uh, for loop. So there's no point using a for loop if you don't have a set number of times you want to run. But of course, if you even if you don't, you could always uh, write use the break keyword to stop when needed. In this case, I don't have to use that break keyword anywhere in here. I just let the while loop know if value ever equals zero, terminate this while loop and exit. So as you can see, I enter zero, click enter, and bam, it stops running inside a while loop and then instantly does the calculation down here where I did a what's the number positive integer and what's the number negative integer. But before I confirm that is correct, let me just verify, right? I say negative numbers uh, is five. So one, two, three, four, five. So positive number integers is seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it doesn't count the zero because the zero is instantly checked uh, right here. And it knows that, okay, if it sees zero, don't even go inside this while loop scope, right? Within this curly braces is the scope for this while loop. So it doesn't do that check. It doesn't uh, calculate the zero as part of the positive number, which is pretty much what we want, all right? All right, so the next thing we want to do is actually do a calculation sum of all these values. So what I'm gonna do is uh, add another variable up here. Let's just call it sum and set that to zero, right? By default, so what did I do? Sum equals zero comma, there we go. All right, the sum will now store all of these values right here. And of course, it's still byte data type. And if I, uh, and let's do it right here. Now, sum will pretty much plus equals to whatever value is. And it's important to set it to zero at the beginning, because if you don't set it to zero right here, some will have an error mes uh, message that says, hey, it has not been initialized. We don't know what the default value of sum is. So you're adding whatever value right here to some uh, variable that does not hold any value. So we don't know what you're trying to add. You could say, hey, value may be five, but five is adding to what? I don't know what you're adding it to. So you have to make sure you declare a value. And of course, I'm going to declare zero as the value because by default, it should not hold any other number. Zero should be the only uh, value it should uh, start with at uh, by default. All right, so let's calculate for sum number. Oh, so I should say sum of all integers is the sum, all right? And let's run down, let's do a quick check. So we could do something like one, two, three, negative one, negative two. So the result should just be three if I enter zero. And there we go. Sum of all integers is three. Uh, all integers, three. And of course, let me double check. Negative is one and two, that's correct. Positive is one, two, and three. All right, so just want to make sure that the calculation that this check is correct. And lastly, we want to compute the average. So the average is pretty simple, right? We just have to divide the sum by the total. So we could do something like this. Uh, average of all integers and simply, uh, we could just do sum divided by positive 
the amount of positive number and negative number, and we will get the sum. So let me do something right here. So what if I enter, uh, let's enter five and six, and then zero. Now what we get here, five and six, that's two positive numbers, no negative number. The sum total is 11, but the average is five. Wait, the average should actually be a 5.5. And we were specifically to do, uh, to specify a 5.5 because the program wants us to display the average as a floating point number, but this is a whole number. This is not a floating point number. Now what's going on is that Java sees that this, these numbers are whole, a whole number of, uh, from the byte data type. But when you add them together and divide them, they become integers. So we want to specify to Java, hey, uh, I want you, Java, to see this as a floating point number. So what we could do is specifically multiply it by 1.0, a floating point number, and then uh, turn this whole value into a floating point number, right? Uh, or floating point result. So instead of getting five this time, we should now get 5.5. So let's run that again just to verify that this is correct. Let's enter five, six, and zero again. And this time, there we go. Five and six, that's two negatives, uh, zero, I'm mean, sorry, two positive, zero negatives. The sum total is 11. And the uh, average of these two numbers are 5.5. All right. So that's how we utilize a loop with floating point numbers to calculate the total number of negative and positive number entered, the sum total of all of these numbers added together, and then displaying the average as a floating point value. All done in just a few lines of code. It's pretty simple. Hopefully this all makes sense.